Now here we're going to make a comparison. We're at 76 degrees outdoor ambient, 64 on the suction, fairly mild inside, uh, 197, 198 on the head pressure. Now I'm going to add a whole bunch of load to this thing and we'll see what happens. But first I'm going to give you the inside temperature. Here we have the inside return air temperature at, uh, we'll call it 74 I guess. Uh, supply is 53, gives us 19.9 uh, split across the coil. So now I'm going to increase this temperature here. Now here you can see my return air, I've, I've uh, knocked it way up to 91. Uh, Supplier 67, it's, it's actually moving 24 uh, degrees across the coil, which is common for this machine. But the important part is my return air is coming back at 91. Uh, so let's go outside and see what's happened to the head pressure with this increased load. Okay, looking at the uh, outside temperature, we're at 76. Uh, Suction pressure is 76, uh, essentially. 229 head. Okay. I've increased the load on the inside of this quite a bit. And let's take a look at the differences I had in head pressure above the ambient temperature with the different loads. Okay, looking at the low load condition, we're about 198 on the head. That condenses us at about a 102 minus a 76 equals 26 degrees temperature split in the low load condition. Let's look at the high load now. Okay, with the increased load, we're up to about 232 head pressure. That gives us about 112 as a condensing temperature. So we actually have 37 degrees above the ambient outdoor temperature. So we've increased this uh, load on the condensing unit by a considerable amount by increasing the indoor load without changing the outdoor temperature. Uh, just by changing the load, we can make a pretty significant difference in the head pressure by having that high load. Now, it's an extreme case, but it does prove the rule. 